Spongebob X here for my biggest review yet. My final review for the Walt Disney Treasures DVDs for Donald Duck Volumes 1 through 4. Donald Duck was Disney's number one star, starring in the most colored cartoons out of any other Disney character. Now this review might be harder to judge compared to others, considering how Donald is the unluckiest duck in the world, meaning most of his shorts will end with Donald in defeat, so it might be a little trickier to judge if a bad ending was warranted or funny. Volume 4 of Donald Duck also contained a few select shorts from the Mickey Mouse Works series, so I will also be including those shorts in this review. The first short I'm going to review is... Barely Asleep. So most of the review will be in alphabetical order. Donald is a park ranger, and upon the park's winter closure, Donald orders the bears to head to their caves to hibernate. All of the other bears get tired of Humphrey's disruptions and kick him out. <coughs> as Humphrey takes shelter in Donald's cabin while trying not to get caught. After many failed attempts, Humphrey disguises as a baby and leaves himself outside the bear cave as the bears take him in. It's a silly cartoon overall. 6 out of 10. B at the beach. I feel bad for Donald in this one. Usually Donald gets punished because he picks on someone and gets karma for it. But this is a short where Donald gets tortured by a bee at the beach over something he didn't mean to do in the first place. It's not like Donald intentionally stomped on Spike. It's not like he knew he was there the whole time. I mean... Uh, can you blame him? I mean, he's so big and Spike's so small, so yeah, it's easy for anyone to miss. So Spike didn't handle the conflict very well either. He just kicked sand into Donald's uh, face, and there's plenty of room for Spike to pick another spot, you know, especially for a little guy like him. There's a lot. It's easier to find a spot when you're that little compared to being that big on a beach, but uh, yeah, Spike just came across as a real spoiled and entitled brat, so seeing the short end with him causing Donald to get stranded and chased by sharks just wasn't pleasant to watch. The short just made me wish someone would smack that bee a fly swatter. So instead, let's just watch this clip of Donald stomping on Spike and imagine this was the real ending instead. 2 out of 10. Bee on Guard. Well, here's a better bee cartoon. I remember first seeing this one at Disney World back in 2003. In this short, Donald tricks a friendly guard bee into stealing a bunch of honey from a kingdom of bees, and the bees kick out the guard. When the former guard realizes that Donald wasn't a fellow bee and stole their honey, he fights back. I always get a laugh out of the explosive sting he gives Donald at the end. The bee is welcomed back with his job. What makes this one work better was that Donald was in the wrong, so his comical punishment felt warranted. It's a funny cartoon overall, 7 out of 10. Bellboy Donald. Donald is a bellboy at a hotel, but is warned by his boss that if he loses his temper on a guest again, he's fired. Donald tries being on his best behavior, but that is really pushed to its limit when he's forced to deal with a bratty cat child. In this short, Pete is a wealthy man with a spoiled rich child, and so Donald has to be on his best behavior for these two, but um, Pete's son is a real troublemaker. Wow, young PJ was a real brat back then. A lot smaller and a lot more gravelly, too. Fun fact is that he was also voiced by Clarence Nash, the original voice of Donald Duck. You haven't much on the ball, eh? As soon as I heard that laugh, I got PDST for a moment. <laughs> How was Rare not sued for all the sound effects they stolen from Disney? <laughs> In the end, Donald snaps and we get this priceless ending. Am I fired? You're fired! No, stop it! It's a funny cartoon. 8 out of 10. Boodle Beetle. This is perhaps the most overplayed Donald Duck cartoon I've ever seen. Back before getting the Donald Duck treasure DVDs, I discovered a lot of Donald cartoons by watching those old classic cartoon compilations people used to flood YouTube with. And for some reason, this was one that showed up a lot. Sometimes even more than once in one compilation. I'm glad I have these on DVD now, because not only because they're in better quality, but I don't have to worry about non-English dubs being in the mix. For some reason, a lot of these old cartoon compilations had mixed-language dubs thrown in there without warning, which really dampened the binge for those who just wanted to watch them in English. Anyways, this is just a story of an old beetle trying to stop a young beetle from running away by telling the story of how when he was younger, he once ran away from home but got caught by a monster who happened to be Donald Duck. Donald was a bug collector and wanted to find a rare boodle beetle. It's basically a moral story about not running away from home, and the short ends with Donald as an old man still looking for the beetle. It's a pretty basic but harmless story. 5 out of 10. Canvas Back Duck. 
While Donald's ego gets stroked over a handicap strength test games at a carnival, a boy brags to Huey, Dewey, and Louie that his uncle could beat their uncle, and the nephews enter Donald into a wrestling match. Nice to see a short where the nephews support their uncle for once. Of course, they find out the boy was actually a con used to lure more dead meat for a deadly wrestling champ, Pee Wee Pete. The nephews try warning Donald, but he's too worked up to listen. What a great yeller! I am too. Let's go home. We get a bunch of funny, silly shenanigans of Donald getting hurt and running in fear as the nephews assist him. Donald somehow knocks out Pete by barely tapping his glass jaw. It's a funny short overall, 7 out of 10. Chip and Dale. While this isn't the first cartoon to star the two famous chipmunks, this was the first one to officially give them their names. And it's the first time they're pitted against who would become their main arch enemy in future cartoons, Donald Duck. Dale still wasn't given his red nose yet, but they finally got closer to giving the two more distinct appearances instead of making them both look exactly like Chip by giving Dale a goofier looking head and face. Donald chops down the chipmunk's tree to get more firewood for his fireplace, and Chip and Dale try getting their tree and nuts back. The way they try making the tree falling seem so colossal, only to show how puny it really is was a rather funny moment. Ah, there we are. Dale tries kicking Donald's butt despite being so short. In the end, Chip bowls over Donald's cabin by rolling a growing snowball, and Dale kicks Donald's butt. Just that little ouch Donald gives at the end just cracks me up. A pretty funny cartoon introduced the funny dynamic of Donald versus the Chipmunks, 8 out of 10. Chips Ahoy, the Chipmunks' final theatrical short. Chip and Dale spot an island with an oak tree full of acorns across a pond and steal Donald's ship in a bottle to sail over there, and Donald tries stopping them. There's a funny running gag where Chip warns Dale that Donald is on their trail, only for Dale to reveal he planned everything ahead of time, and Dale's hijinks manage to get Donald to fling onto the island, knocking a bunch of nuts into the ship, and splashing it away back to the other side, leaving Donald stranded. Later that night, the chipmunks laugh at Donald as he knocks down the tree to build a boat to sail off. It's a silly cartoon, 7 out of 10. Clock Watcher Donald works as a gift wrapper under a strict time schedule, but Donald is an angry slacker and tries rushing through the job with no effort put into it. Donald tries cheating by messing with the clock and fakes that he's working. Donald keeps having issues with a jack-in-the-box that won't stay in the box. And Donald is forced to work overtime as he rushes up to his boss's room and beats him up. It's pretty fine to see Donald losing his temper across this cartoon. 7 out of 10. Haven't we had a lovely day? <laughs> Clown of the Jungle. Donald tries taking pictures of birds of the jungle, but keeps getting interrupted by the annoying antics of the Araquan bird from the Three Caballeros. There's a lot of messed up suicide imagery in this cartoon for no reason, but there are some funny bits in this short. In the end, Donald tries shooting the bird but misses. Donald snaps and starts acting like the Araquan bird. It's a wacky cartoon, 6 out of 10. Contrary Condor. Donald is an egg collector exploring the Andes Mountains and tries to take some condor eggs but gets bothered by a noisy baby condor. As Donald sees the mother returning, Donald harshly kicks the baby out and hides in the condor eggshell, only for the mom to mistake Donald as her baby, and she tries forcing him to fly. <coughs> Donald makes a decoy to fool the mom into thinking he dropped to his death. <laughs> Isn't that the cry they use for the seagull who got its butt shaved in Peter Pan? The baby causes Donald and the egg he was after to fall into the water, and the mother thinks her fallen baby survived after all. The short ends with Donald trapped once again with the mother. It's a funny short. 6 out of 10. Corn Chips. As Donald shovels his sidewalk, his work gets ruined by Chip and Dale as they shovel their tree, and Donald tricks them into shoveling his sidewalk. The two angrily stomp over to confront Donald, but they get distracted by the popcorn he makes and decide to try taking Donald's popcorn. They try eating it uncooked and angrily kick the kernels towards a fire, only to see it pop into something tasty when exposed to heat. 
As they hide in the box, Donald pours them into his pan and heats them over the fire. The two rodents take Donald's popcorn bowl, and Donald chases them throughout the cartoon. <laughs> Donald tries burning them out of their tree, and they fake a surrender by giving Donald back his popcorn, only to sneak in the whole box of popcorn, causing the tree to overflow and flood Donald's lawn with popcorn as Donald starts shoveling all the popcorn. It's another funny cartoon that'll just make you want to sit down and eat a ball of popcorn. 7 out of 10. Crazy with the heat? And you thought I reviewed all the Goofy cartoons. But there are a few shorts where Goofy co-starred with Donald. In this one, Donald and Goofy get stranded in a desert, and Donald is desperate for water. Goofy finds a mirage for a soda bar. Is it just me or does the bartender look like Stromboli from Pinocchio? Goofy keeps ordering ice cream sodas, but they keep disappearing on him, and the Mirage bartender is threatening Goofy to pay for them. Donald keeps falling for the mirages of icebergs and mistaken Goofy for one of them, causing Goofy to drop all the dishes he had to clean. The bartender, Mirage, attacks Donald and Goofy, and they escape on a camel's back. It's a basic short, but with funny facial expressions. 5 out of 10. <laughs> Cured Duck. Before you ask, yes, Donald was a smoker in his early shorts. Donald meets up with Daisy, but she coughs over Donald smoking. Donald tries opening a window for her, but struggles to get it open, and we see one of Donald's craziest temper tantrums ever. Don't you just have one of those days where you just feel like you could do all this if you didn't have to worry about damage costs? I remember seeing a sped up gif of this on the internet long ago, and I thought it was the funniest thing, but it underwhelms me to see the original version, because despite the craziness going on, the pacing feels sluggish and the sound effects don't sound loud or impactful enough for the damage being done. The sped up version just led a lot more to the imagination and it had me imagining better sounds to go with the footage. It's still a funny scene, but I wish it was faster and more chaotic like the gif implied. Daisy is angry with Donald and doesn't want to see him until he fixes his bad temper. Donald seeks help with a product that will punish him until he learns to control his temper, and those are like the funniest parts of this whole short. Uh, I just get a laugh every time I see the machine insulting him and laughing at his pain. If you can take my insults for 10 minutes and still control your temper, you'll be cured forever! Now will you please look behind you? Sucker! <laughs> Hey, you're doing fine. In fact, I'm going to give you a nice surprise. <laughs> Close your eyes and hold out your hand. Daisy, it's the new me. Donald returns to Daisy and wins her back for a date, but when Daisy puts on a silly hat, Donald laughs at her, and Daisy ends up losing her temper on Donald and attacks him. It's one of the funnier Donald shorts, 8 out of 10. <laughs> Daddy Duck. Donald adopts a baby kangaroo to be his son. The baby turns out to be a huge challenge for Donald, with its hyperactive excitement. <laughs> Donald tries giving the baby a bath, but it doesn't work. The funniest part of the short occurs when the baby is scared of a stuffed bear rug, and Donald pretends to fight it off to impress the baby, but Donald goes too far and pretends to be eaten by the bear and stuffs himself inside it. Yum, 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 yum. The baby knocks Donald out of the bear and he cuddles up to Donald. It's a cute and hilarious short. 9 out of 10. Huh? A Day in the Life of Donald Duck. Now this is technically cheating for it's not really a Donald Duck short, but a full episode of Walt Disney's Disneyland TV show with a mixture of live action and animated segments. It was included on one of the DVDs as a bonus feature, so I'm including it in this video. As I've said before, it's too bad Disney Plus doesn't add the whole series of Walt Disney's anthology onto Disney Plus. For many of the episodes are lost to the public, and there are many other specials that featured or included Donald Duck. The episode opens up with Walt Disney addressing to the many fans of Donald Duck about the character's life, as Walt Disney reveals that Donald Duck lives in L.A. and drives to work in a little cartoon car. Watching this just reminds me of why I loved it when Walt Disney was still alive. You know, I wasn't even alive when he 
was still alive, but man, like looking back at all the specials that he made when he was alive, um, you know, the way he wanted viewers to see the characters like they're actually alive, the way we see Donald walking into the Walt Disney Studios as if he actually works there, it's both charming and funny. Donald starts reading his fan mail and gets annoyed at the questions. Dear Donald, why do you have web feet? Because I'm a duck, you little smart Donald gets outraged when someone says that they can't understand what he says, and Donald demands to speak with his voice, as we see Donald talking and arguing with his voice actor, Clarence Nash. Hi, Donald. Boy, what a beautiful day for the little creatures. Let's get about it. Donald wants Clarence to speak with his Donald voice, as Clarence recites Peter Piper and sings the Davy Crockett theme. What do you pick a 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 and Donald even admits that he can't understand him either. And so the two get into an argument with Donald Duck voices. And after storming out, Clarence prank calls Donald and does the horse noise that he did in plenty of Disney shorts. It's worth mentioning that Clarence Nash was practically the original Frank Welker, where whenever Walt Disney needed someone to make animal noises, he usually relied on Clarence Nash. Clarence voiced like everything from cats meowing, donkeys braying, horses neighing, and more. Next, Jimmy Dodd comes in to share with Donald a few song ideas he has for Donald's future cartoons, along with drawings to go with them. Wah, wah, wah. Donald Duck, he's my little pal. Wah, wah, wah. Donald Duck, Daisy is his gal. Unfortunately, I don't think this song was ever used in a future Donald Duck cartoon, but... Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> bravo, bravo, I'm dying. Um... Jimmy then sings the song to fit different cultures, including a mariachi theme for Mexico, followed by a French one, German, Italian, and one that would make his rich uncle proud, Scottish, and finally Chinese. Show some pluck like Donald Duck. <laughs> Donald is then sent to the story room for a conference. The men try showing Donald a storyboard for his next cartoon, but Donald keeps interrupting for additional changes, like adding more birds and butterflies, along with other characters. Don't forget Pinocchio! Pinocchio! As the story gets overcrowded with characters, Donald forgets he was the one who asked for them in the first place, and angrily tells the men to get rid of them. Donald demands to be the only one in the cartoon. As one of the storyboard artists thinks about it, he sees a water dispenser leaking, giving him an idea as it transitions into one of Donald Duck's shorts where he can't get asleep because of a linky sink. I'm not going to review this short until I get the individual short, so let's ignore it for now. So far, the special is great, but then we get to the part where the Mouseketeers show up, and Donald has to give them a tour. I'm sorry, but I hate the Mickey Mouse Club. I blame the entire show for why people badly judge Disney as being for little kids. It all traces back to this show. Back then, you know, Disney movies were for anyone. They were for all ages, but it wasn't until, um, you know, TV became a thing and they were pressuring Walt Disney to start making TV shows. That's where he was suddenly forced to start, like, having these characters geared specifically towards kids. And, you know, it led to making, like, a live-action show where it starred a bunch of kids. It's just a lame excuse to try, you know leading people into the Disney brand, but all it was was just lazily hiring kids and trying to show off their talents, if you can even call it that. And um, So yeah, thanks to this show, it led to Disney Channel, which eventually led to live-action kid shows being favored over animation. So if you hate like what Disney Channel's become, you can trace it all the way back to the Mickey Mouse Club. So I don't hear enough people pointing that out, but that's just what I've observed over the years. It's like if people, there are a lot of people who complain they hate like all the sitcoms or pop stars that come out of Disney Channel, and it can all be traced back to the Mickey Mouse Club. So yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just not a fan of it. So there are plenty of episodes of Walt Disney's anthology that start off decent, but once they try shoving in the Mouseketeer kids to promote the Mickey Mouse Club on the side, um, yeah, they just come in, perform songs that drag on forever, and it just makes me start hating the episodes. 
So the kids show up and make Donald an official Mouseketeer, and they give him his own Mickey ears. Donald gives the kids a tour, but they ditch him to check out the sound effects department. It transitions into a Donald Duck short where Donald is a fire chief, as it occasionally transitions to live action to show how they made the sound effects for the cartoon. Donald gets splashed with water and his colors fade off, which transitions into the ink and paint department as Donald hops onto the desk to get repainted, but he gets hung to dry. Oh, just a minute, Donald. You have to dry off first. Gee, do you use all this paint? We use about 20 gallons for every Donald Duck picture. I'm very expensive. <laughs> as the kids learn how much paint they use for just one Donald Duck short, the painter recalls one cartoon where they only had to use one pint of paint on Donald, leading into a funny World War II short where Donald gets coated in invisible paint. It, it's a very funny short, but once again, I'll review it later, along with the other shorts that were included on this special. Then we're forced to suffer through the kids singing the Donald Duck song that Jimmy came up with. Then an artist named Roy comes in and starts drawing characters. Roy claims that you can make a drawing out of anything. Donald challenges that by drawing a zigzag scribble, and Roy fires back by turning the scribbles into a monstrous Donald Duck. Donald Duck. In dedication of Donald Duck, Roy presents the cartoon Good Scouts to show how good of a scout Donald is. Kind of ironic because Donald was not a good scout in that short, but more on that later. As the short abruptly ends, so does the episode, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping for a proper send-off of Donald saying farewell to everyone, only to head home and come into another problem or something, but nope, nothing like that. So, overall, it was a decent special, mostly an excuse for the studio to show off how things go around the studio, similar to the movie The Reluctant Dragon, while using Donald Duck as the main link between all of these transitions, until the Mouseketeer show up and it shifts the focus onto them for no reason. Despite not caring for the Mouseketeers, this was still a decent special, with fun scenarios of what it would be like if Donald was real and working at the Walt Disney Studios. Um, even the four shorts they included are pretty funny ones. I'd give the episode an 8 out of 10. Donald and the Wheel. This is a very strange educational cartoon, longer than your average 7 minute short. It opens up with these strange live action silhouettes of a boy and his dad as they sing about the wheel. The dad claims the wheel is the greatest invention, while the son doubts it. The son tries pointing out better inventions, only for the dad to say they were only possible because of the wheel, including planes, cars, typewriters, trains, and more. Eventually, the son gives in and admits the wheel is very impressive. The dad then takes his son back in time to find the inventor of the wheel. They come across Donald Duck, who is portrayed as a red-headed caveman. The son doubts Donald to be the inventor of the wheel, but the dad tells him to be patient, for progress takes time. As Donald gets chased by a tiger, he trips on an oddly shaped boulder that spins like a wheel and bowls over the tiger. The dad talks to Donald and tells him to draw out what he just witnessed, as the dad tells him what a wheel is. Donald asks what he's supposed to do with a wheel, and the father and son try explaining the many uses for it. The father and son are revealed to be spirits of progress. They show Donald that he can cut two slices off of a log and use them to attach it to a sled and make it easier to move. Then we see how the wheels evolved from wood to stronger materials over the years. We see further evolution of carts and how it evolved into more forms of transportation like wagons, leading um, to like cars and trains. And The short is very similar to Toot Whistle, Plunk, and Boom, but instead of being about the progress of sounds and the evolution of instruments that can make those sounds, this focuses more on vehicles and other inventions. As soon as Donald sees the craziness that comes with uh, traffic, he throws in the towel and decides he wants nothing to do with inventing the wheel. While the spirits try convincing Donald about how important the wheel is, they find out Donald thinks the Earth is flat, as Junior tries showing Donald how the Earth spins like a wheel, which leads to like different demonstrations of physics, of like um, you know how like bigger cogs move uh, slower, while smaller ones move faster. Next, it delves into how wheels evolve into different ways of listening to music, including music boxes, record players, to even a jukebox. Then Donald is shown different forms of music as we see a lady dancer who changes appearance and styles to match with the different genres of music. <music> then Donald is shown other future uses of the wheel and how there are even wheels that we can't see, like wheels of energy and space satellites. After all of that, Donald still refuses to be a part of it and leaves. 
The spirits are left realizing Donald wasn't the inventor of the wheel after all, but they continue their search knowing for a fact that there is someone who indeed invented the wheel. This is a very experimental short from Disney. Its two spirit hosts were definitely an odd pair. This feels like a short that Disney knew would be a hard sell, and it feels like they shoehorned Donald Duck into it in hopes of it grabbing viewers' attentions. Uh, the short utilizes many forms of media, including live action, rotoscoping, stop motion, puppetry, musical theater, and more. This is definitely a strange and obscure short, but I'm surprised this was never shown in schools or something. There's another educational Donald Duck short on this list that actually was used um, for educational purposes in some schools, so I'm surprised that no one ever mentions um, Donald and the Wheel. It's a strange but interesting and fun educational short. It may impress viewers over how much research Walt's team of artists and scientists put into it. 7 out of 10. Donald Applecore. This is one of the funniest Chippendale cartoons in my opinion. It also happens to be my introduction to Chippendale. Um, I remember uh, renting this on a VHS back then and it was full of Chippendale cartoons. And in this short, Donald is an apple farmer who's mad to see Chippendale eating all of his apples. <laughs> I never understood the meaning behind this whole Applecore Baltimore joke that they keep using, but it still gives me a laugh every time. I remember uh, my sister and I, when we had eat apples as kids, we would quote the short and pretend to throw apples at each other. Even as stupid kids, we were smart enough to know throwing at them would hurt for real, so this cartoon is just full of funny moments, like this priceless scene. <laughs> Donald ends up creating an explosive to destroy the chipmunks, but it gets loose into his chicken house. <laughs> The bomb blows Donald all the way into China, and we get this racist yet hilarious ending. I still love this short, 8 out of 10. Donald and the Gorilla, another childhood classic I rented from a vintage VHS called Donald's Scary Tales. This was the first cartoon to kick off the collection of spooky-themed Disney shorts. In this one, on a stormy night, Donald and his nephews overhear a news report about a killer gorilla named Ajax and how he escaped from a zoo. Donald decides to scare the boys, and the boys decide to get back at Donald by dressing up as the gorilla to scare him back. However, the real Ajax breaks into Donald's house, and Donald confronts the gorilla, thinking it's the boys trying to trick him again. He begins to realize it's a real gorilla, and we see Donald and the nephews trying to work together to speak through the house without alerting the killer gorilla. <laughs> Leading to a big chase scene. Man, Donald's house is huge. How can he afford such a place? The boys overhear how tear gas can be used to stop a gorilla, and they throw a tear gas bomb, causing both the gorilla and Donald to cry, as the two huddle together to cry it out. It's a fun and thrilling cartoon with a lot of humorous moments, 8 out of 10. Donald in Math Magic Land, another special educational cartoon starring Donald Duck, and arguably one of Disney's greatest educational cartoons. I remember seeing this on TV in the early 2000s late on Saturday night during Disney Channel's greatly missed Vault Disney block where they showed classic shows. This was shown along the first episode of Disney's Wonderful World of Color program, marking the first time Disney made a TV presentation in color. After a funny segment of Ludwig von Drake introducing the audiences to all the wonderful things color can express, it leads to this short that has nothing to do with Ludwig's lecture and song, but the short itself is indeed very colorful. In this short, Donald ends up in a strange land called Math Magic Land as a narrator, known as the Spirit of Adventure, tries telling Donald all the wonderful things that math can do. Donald claims that math is for eggheads, but the Spirit of Adventure demonstrates how math is everywhere. He demonstrates by showing how music is made because of math, 
as he demonstrates by having Donald pluck a string, only to divide the strings into different shapes and sizes to form a harp, producing um, better music. Again, this short is very similar to Donald and the Wheel in the Adventures in Music shorts, but I'll say this is probably the best out of all of them, really making an adventure out of the education. The short goes further into shapes made of mathematics and how they were used to form the basis for buildings and other things in life, including art and even life itself. Um, it's then further explained how math is even found in games like chess and pool. This became literally true with future of games when you realize many video games are literally made of codes. The Spirit of Adventure mentions how chess was used as the theme for Lewis Carroll's Alice Through the Looking Glass story, and he forces Donald to dress like Alice for his demonstration. Well, there you go, people. Many question why Disney never made him an animated sequel of Alice in Wonderland based on Through the Looking Glass. Well, here's the next best thing. As Donald grows in size, he's able to get a better view of chess and see how it looks and plays. Donald must be reading my mind because he too is bored of this game. Donald is then shown how baseball uses math for the field is shaped like a diamond and needs math to keep score. Donald is shown billiards and how important mathematics are to that game and how it relies on the measurements and angles to move the balls around. Admittedly, this short makes me feel stupid because school was never easy for me and I have a hard time at applying mathematics into real life situations. But I'm still impressed with the demonstrations and animation on trying to teach people about it. Donald has shown a bunch of locked doors leading to the future, and they can only be opened through mathematics, as the spirit shares his belief that the future minds will uncover its secrets. Now I'm surprised this never got a mention in Kingdom Hearts. Would have been interesting to see Sora try to open one of these doors. <laughs> While I do feel lost with some of the stuff the short discusses, it still had my attention for the most part, and I, I could see some getting bored of this short, but I still can't deny how beautiful the backgrounds are. It was fun to see Donald trying to follow along with the complexities of math, and just like me, he struggles to understand it, but he still respects it and becomes fascinated with it. I still enjoy this short and can see why some teachers would love to show this VHS in class, and I unfortunately never had the privilege of being shown this back in school, but it sure would have beat the heck out of doing a quiz or homework. It's a rather impressive educational short, 8 out of 10. Donald's Diary? I really don't care for this short. It's just overall strange. Donald reads his diary with a voice that doesn't even match. This morning was much like any other morning. Speaking of which, Daisy has a really strange appearance in the short. She appears as a light pink color instead of her usual white, and she has a more seductive voice. Help! Help! Save me! Donald tells the story of how Daisy fell in love with him at first sight, but he never noticed her until she trapped him against his will. It leads to Donald meeting her family, and for some reason Donald's nephews are Daisy's little brothers in this short. Eventually, Donald dreams that he marries Daisy, and as soon as it happens, Daisy becomes bossier and angrier. What's the matter? Donald feels like a robotic slave and goes crazy, only for Donald to wake up and run away. I honestly don't get the ending. He's now a guard or something, I don't know. This might be one of the worst cartoons to feature Daisy Duck, I just didn't find it funny or entertaining. 3 out of 10. Dragon Around, another Chippendale short I recall seeing on a VHS rental. Dale is fascinated with a fairy tale book about a knight fighting a dragon, but he swears he sees a dragon for real. It warns Chip. Gotta love how their tree looks like a castle in this short. Chip assumes Dale has been reading too many fairy tales and wants proof that there is a dragon, only for Chip to be convinced when he sees Donald operating a tractor claw to prepare a new highway, and he eyes Chip and Dale's tree for demolition. <laughs> Chip dresses as a knight while Dale acts as his steed, as the two chipmunks try fighting off Donald's so-called dragon and dislodge its teeth. As Donald tries ramming the tree down, the chipmunks dismantle the tractor and Donald smacks right into the tree. Donald tries blasting the tree down with dynamite, but the chipmunks extinguish the dynamite, place them as steps on a ladder, and fake the sound of an explosion, causing Donald to chase Dale up a dynamite ladder, and Chip ignites the TNT as Donald panics and tries getting away as the dynamite goes off, lifting Donald up like fireworks. Another funny Chip and Dale cartoon, 7 out of 10. Grin and Barrett. 
I believe this was the first short to introduce Humphrey the Bear. Donald visits Brownstone National Park. Remember, don't molest the bears. Last year, we had one complaint of stealing. Shame. Ha. Humphrey Bear gets assigned to assist Donald Duck and has to fight the urge to steal Donald's food. As Donald drives off, Humphrey tricks Donald into thinking he ran him over. Uh-oh, I gotta get out of here. Donald tries bribing Humphrey to shut up by giving him all of his food. As Donald realizes Humphrey was faking the accident, he alerts a thievery, and the two end up dropping all the food, and the ranger forces them to pick up the litter. As they clean up, they spot the ranger trying to steal some ham, and we get this hilarious ending. No! It's a silly cartoon. 7 out of 10. Donald's crying. Donald has a date with Daisy, but he can't afford to take her out dancing. He stoops to stealing from his nephew's piggy bank. Shame on you. You forgot to kiss your dad. He ends up having a wonderful night with Daisy, but starts getting haunted with guilt and feels like a thieving criminal for what he did to his nephews. He decides to make it right by earning back the money and putting it back into the kid's safe without them even knowing. As Donald tries sneaking the money back in, the boys wake up, they come in and start crying, thinking Donald is stealing from their piggy bank. It's an okay short, 5 out of 10. Donald's Dilemma. More like Daisy's Dilemma. This is a rather dark but hilarious short. Daisy is seeing a psychiatrist as she tells the story of how she lost her boyfriend, Donald. Her story starts off showing them as a happy couple taking a stroll, but a flower pot fell on Donald's head, which somehow causes Donald to get convinced that he's the greatest singer in the world. When you wished upon a star. But he somehow forgets all about Daisy and wants nothing to do with her. Donald becomes a famous singer, and Daisy keeps attempting to see him, but his fame keeps pushing her further away. It drives her to insane depression, and she even contemplates suicide, which explains why she's speaking to the psychiatrist. All Daisy has to remember Donald by is the flower pot that hit Donald. The psychiatrist gives Daisy two options, to let Donald go and let the world have him, or make herself happy. Me! 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 The therapist then tells Daisy to sabotage Donald's performance by dropping another flower pot on his head. Great therapeutic advice there. <laughs> As Daisy succeeds in hitting Donald, we get a funny moment with Donald one minute singing a beautiful version of When You Wish Upon a Star to him singing it horribly with his regular voice. As the audience boos him. Despite how Donald's career was ruined, as soon as he sees Daisy, he remembers her and is very happy to see her. I guess the therapist was wrong. He made it sound like this move would only make Daisy happy, but Donald is clearly happier with her. It may have some dark moments, but I still found it to be a very funny short with a cute ending. 7 out of 10. Donald's Double Trouble. Well, we went from a decent Daisy cartoon to a pretty lousy one. The short opens up with Daisy breaking up with Donald for not having good speaking and wanting him to have a better personality. A few seconds in and I already hate Daisy in this short. Donald comes across a fellow who looks exactly like him and talks with a fancier vocabulary. Donald offers to pay the guy to pose as him to fool Daisy into thinking he got a new personality. The double wants nothing to do with it until Donald shows him a picture of Daisy and he becomes attracted to her. The double decides to follow through, only to try taking Daisy for himself. You're looking more beautiful than ever. Most of the short is Donald getting jealous over the double, hitting on Daisy and receiving kisses from her as he follows them through a carnival. The short ends with Donald sneaking into a tunnel of love ride, and he tries getting onto the boat with Daisy, only to accidentally have Daisy knocked off the boat, as both Donald and his double make a run for it. The short made every single duck look like a horrible person, it made Daisy look shallow, it made Donald a terrible liar, and it made the double a double-crossing liar. So, did not care for it, 2 out of 10. Donald's Dream Voice Donald is a door-to-door -door salesman, but can't make a sale because no one can understand him. Good morning, madam. I have some wonderful brushes for sale. How dare you use such language in my presence! Daisy is a very supportive girlfriend who shows empathy with Donald and encourages him to get back out there and do a great job. 
Sadly, Daisy's moral boost wasn't enough. Not only that, but that was the last we saw of her in this short, which I kind of wanted to see more of her in this. But Donald comes across these pills that can allow him to speak, and he ends up sounding like the double from the short I just reviewed. I can talk. I can talk. I can talk! Oh boy, I can talk! Donald is thrilled that he can finally talk, and he decides to buy a wedding ring and finally propose a Daisy. But as the pill wears off, Donald tries another but loses all but one as Donald chases a loose pill. The short abruptly ends with a cow swallowing Donald's pill. My dear fellow, I can't understand a word you say. I like the short at first, but I'd say once Donald loses his pills, the short really goes downhill, and the ending was very unpleasant. Now, I wasn't expecting this short to end with a wedding or a proposal or anything, but I was hoping it would at least end with Donald going back to Daisy, feeling defeated, but she expresses how much she loves him, whether people understand him or not. It would have at least felt more like a complete ending to wrap the story up, instead of seeing Donald just lose it over a cow not understanding him. The first half is funny and cute, but the second half is too rushed, abrupt, and it feels incomplete. 4 out of 10. Donald's Garden. Oh no. I was dreading of having to talk about this one. This, in my opinion, is the absolute worst Donald Duck cartoon. We see Donald has a prize-winning garden, but it gets destroyed by a pesky gopher. The short harshly ends as the gopher gives Donald the Fifty Shades of Grey treatment and forces Donald to watch as the gopher eats up his entire garden. This short pisses me off. It just makes me wish Donald could have broken free, pulled out a shotgun, and shot that gopher right between the eyes. One out of ten. Donald's gold mine. Donald works in a mine with a stubborn donkey who keeps laughing at him. I always get a laugh at the look the donkey gives when Donald kicks it. Donald gets a pickaxe stuck in his shirt, and the short wastes a bit of time on this bit. Early Disney shorts just love stretching out gags of a character trying to break free out of something. Donald strikes gold and is struck with greed, but his donkey gets scared and accidentally knocks him over into the ore deposit, as Donald ends up going through a bunch of conveyor belts, grinders, and other deadly contraptions. There's no music during these parts, which seem to give off a bit of dread, instead of the wacky music you would expect to hear in a cartoon like this. In a dark moment, they make it look like Donald was killed and smelted into a gold bar. Even his donkey looks horrified and saddened by this. But the donkey laughs as we see Donald breaking free of a golden duck statue. It's half silly and half suspenseful. 6 out of 10. Donald's Happy Birthday. This is such an overhated Donald Duck cartoon that I find to be one of the funniest. The nephews want to get their allowance so they can buy Donald cigars for his birthday. I admit, I kind of wish they hid that detail until the very end. It would have made the ending even funnier than it already is, but... So Donald pays them for doing chores, but he forces them to put their money away into a savings box. The boys keep attempting to sneak the money out and get Donald's gift. When Donald realizes the boys took the money, he spies on them and notices them buying cigars. Donald ambushes them in their treehouse, and uh, as he's fooled into thinking that they bought the cigars for themselves, and he tries using the old tactic of scaring people out of smoking by forcing them to smoke till they get sick and never want to touch the stuff again. But Donald takes it to the extreme by forcing him to smoke all of them at once while he amplifies the smoke. And it's so messed up that I can't help but laugh at Donald's sadistic laughter as the boys look stoned. Come on, boys. <laughs> We're going to have a good smoke. <laughs> of course, Donald sees a note on the box of cigars saying, Happy Birthday, Donald. And Donald feels horrible for what he just did, as he starts feeling so small of himself that he shrinks. Such a messed up but hilarious short. I don't get all the hate it gets. 8 out of 10. <laughs> Donald's off day. Donald wakes up to what seems like a perfect day for golfing, but as soon as he steps outside, it storms horribly, and Donald is now in a down mood. In a cruel twist, it turns bright and sunny as Donald heads back in, but storms as soon as he turns back around. This angers Donald, and he takes his frustration out on his nephews by forcing them to go to their rooms. As Donald overhears the radio about checking in with your doctor, Donald starts having hallucinations that he might be dying of a disease. The boys sneak in on this and decide to mess with Donald's hallucinations even further. Help! I 
They sneak an air pump bunny toy into his shirt to fool Donald into thinking that his heart is beating its last beat. Donald prepares to say his farewells and even gives them his will. Donald realizes the boys pulled a cruel prank on him. He stomps after them, feeling betrayed and foolish. Suddenly, the sun is shining and Donald happily rushes back outside, only to be struck by lightning. Such a cruel, dark yet hilarious short. 7 out of 10. Donald's Penguin. Well, this is a rather abusive short. Donald receives a feisty pet penguin in a package that he names Tootsie. The penguin tries eating Donald's fish, and when Donald thinks the penguin ate them, he spanks the penguin, only to feel ashamed when the fish are revealed to be hiding in the castle. However, the penguin does end up eating the fish. Donald gets furious that he pulls out a shotgun and is about to give the penguin the death penalty. Sheesh. Donald can't do it, and he apologizes. Happy ending or not, it doesn't change the fact that Donald was an abusive monster in this cartoon. Would you believe this still isn't the worst thing that Donald has ever done? The Penguin was cute though, but this was one of the lesser Donald shorts, 2 out of 10. Donald Snow Fight, a classic winter cartoon. I remember they used to broadcast this one on TV around the holiday season. Donald is happy to wake up to a snow day as he decides to go sledding. <laughs> He knows his, his nephew's building a snowman, and he destroys it with his sled, which causes the nephews to retaliate and declare a snow war on Donald. <coughs> it's a wacky snowball fight cartoon. Who will win in the end? It's a cartoon about the world's unluckiest duck, who do you think? It's a funny cartoon, 8 out of 10. <coughs> Donald's tire trouble. Donald's car gets a flat tire and Donald tries fixing it, but fails miserably. It's kind of relatable because I hate dealing with cars and know nothing about fixing them. Remember how I said old cartoons had an obsession with characters getting trapped or stuck to something? Yeah, that's like 95% of this short. Donald finally gets the tire back on, but as soon as he hops back in the car, all the tires burst on him and he snaps and angrily drives off just not caring. Kind of relatable, but it falls short compared to other Donald cartoons. 4 out of 10. The Riveter. Pete just fired one of his Riveters and is looking for another, and Donald gets the job but fails throughout. The short has some funny dialogue and sight gags throughout. I always love the shorts where Donald is pitted against Pete. It's like Pete makes a great antagonist for any character you pit him against. It's a funny short overall, 7 out of 10. Uh, shut up. What was that? Donald's Dog Laundry. One of the few shorts to pair Donald with Pluto. Donald tries building a dog washer and wants to test it out on Pluto. So Donald tries luring Pluto over with a rubber bone on a string. And I'm not even going to bother saying what the cheeks look like. <laughs> Donald uses a cat puppet to trigger Pluto into the bath, but Pluto sneezes Donald into the bath as the contraption sets off on Donald. I somehow knew it would end like this, minus the sneezing part, but it's like the animators had a fetish for contraption torture and humiliation in the old cartoons. At least Donald is happy to see the device works in the end. It's a silly cartoon. 7 out of 10. Bill Posters. Another one of the few shorts co-starring Donald and Goofy. The two try setting up posters for soup on a farm setting. Goofy has trouble with a windmill taking his broom and glue bucket. <laughs> Meanwhile, a goat starts eating Donald's posters, for they have pictures of a can on them. The goat also eats Donald's broom head. This whole short has me wondering why they thought wasting time putting ads on a farm was a good idea to begin with. They should have focused on public areas, not private property where no one is around. You can tell this short was made while Disney felt good about Snow White's success, for Donald and Goofy are singing and whistling to Whistle While You Work throughout. I thought Goofy shenanigans were the funniest bits in the short. Um, uh -huh. 
The short wraps up with Donald getting chased by the goat. And Donald and Goofy get trapped on the windmill as the goat runs around day and night just uh, headbutting them. And this is a very underrated short that had me laughing throughout most of it. It's very funny. 8 out of 10. Mr. Duck steps out. This is both the first and second cartoon to feature Daisy Duck. What I mean by that is that she technically first appeared under a different name and appearance in the cartoon Don Donald. But this marked the first time the cartoon referred to her as Daisy Duck while giving her one of her more iconic designs, having the bow on her head. However, Clarence Nash voiced Daisy in her first two shorts before they decided to give her a female voice. I can't help but laugh at Daisy sounding like a higher-pitched Donald Duck. It's so jarring, but so funny. In this short, Donald is ready for a date with Daisy, but his nephews want to go with him, and Donald wants them to stay home. The nephews, of course, follow Donald anyways, but Daisy finds it cute that he brought his nephews along, and Donald decides to go with it. As Donald dances with Daisy, the nephews decide to mess with Donald by having popcorn set off on him, causing Donald to dance rapidly fast, which impresses Daisy. A rare case where Donald gets a happy ending, despite all the bad luck he had to endure. It's a cute and silly cartoon, and a much better cartoon featuring Daisy compared to her actual debut, 7 out of 10. Putt Putt Troubles. Donald takes Pluto on his boat. Pluto chases a frog but gets his nose stuck to a spring. The short manages to offend both African tribesmen and Native Americans. Donald has trouble getting his boat's motor running. Some of the spring gags are kind of funny along with some of the motor gags. And the motor ends up getting tied around Donald as Pluto gets dragged around on the boat. It's got some funny sight gags, 7 out of 10. Donald's Vacation. I love Donald's bottomless canoe at the beginning. Donald tries taking a relaxing nature vacation, and of course, this won't end well. His canoe is also a tent? Dang, that is awesome! Donald tries setting up a lawn chair, but gets stuck to it. <laughs> Donald finally gets his chair set up, and as he relaxes, no White's chipmunk friends raid Donald's food. As Donald's butt gets poked with a pineapple, he gets stuck in his chair again as he chases the chipmunks. <laughs> Donald ends up being led straight to an angry bear, and he flees. It's mostly a Donald torture cartoon, but it has some funny moments. 5 out of 10. Window Cleaners Pluto assists Donald in cleaning windows. Pluto falls asleep to Donald's annoyance. Donald thinks he hooked a bucket of water, but gets a bucket of bolts instead and accidentally smashes a window. Donald angers a bee he tried drowning. He gets stung and ends up falling down a water spout as Pluto plugs it up to silence Donald. It's a silly cartoon, 6 out of 10. Fire Chief. Donald is a fire chief and his nephews are his firemen. Donald acts like he knows what he's doing and acts like the nephews don't know what they're doing, but he keeps messing up and the nephews end up being more resourceful than him. A reoccurring trope in many shorts featuring Donald and his nephews. Donald ends up getting the fire department on fire and Donald races off to find the fire as the nephews try warning him where the fire really is. A lot of funny moments of Donald angrily quacking around. The hose gets twisted into a knot and explodes on Donald, and Donald accidentally hooks up another hose into a gasoline tank. His nephews try warning him, but once again, Donald ignores it and pays the price, as Donald loses both the fire station and the fire truck. Another funny one, 7 out of 10. Timber. Donald is a wandering hobo who tries stealing food from Pete, and Pete makes him pay for it by forcing him to collect lumber from trees. Donald tries getting out of it by breaking the axe, but that doesn't work. Pete ends up getting fed up with Donald and chases him with hand carts. Donald switches the track's lanes, causing Pete to crash through a train, and Donald leaves Scott free. Kind of messed up how Donald stole from someone and got away with it, but it's still pretty funny. 
7 out of 10. Golden Eggs. Donald finds out prices for eggs have skyrocketed, and he wants in on the money as he tries selling his hen's eggs. But Donald gets kicked out of his hen house by a rooster, so Donald disguises as a chicken to try getting his eggs back. This backfires when the rooster falls in love with Donald's disguise. <laughs> Donald gets exposed and chased. As Donald gets away, he trips and breaks the eggs. Sheesh, a bunch of unborn babies died and the rooster is laughing about it. It was kind of a funny short, though. 6 out of 10. A good time for a dime. Donald visits a penny arcade. Donald tries watching an erotic slideshow featuring Daisy Duck, but it acts up on him before it got good. Donald tries a crane game, but gets messy with ink. I feel like the cartoon wastes a little too much time on the crane part, but... Donald tries a flight simulator, but Donald gets mad that the ride didn't last long enough. As Donald threatens the machine, it ends up giving him a wild ride as he heads home with motion sickness. It's an okay short, 6 out of 10. Early to Bed, a very generic and overused plot of a character trying to go to bed but having unfortunate events that keep them awake. It's a simple plot, but there's a lot of funny gags in this one. 6 out of 10. Truant Officer Donald. Donald is a truant officer who sees his nephew swimming instead of being in school, and he tries capturing them to send them off to school. Oh, so this is the source of that one clip people post of Donald getting anal probed, but in full context, he's being stuffed into a hole. But holy crap, they're killer cannibals. In a dark move, Donald tries scaring them out by burning down their clubhouse. That's pretty dark, but the kids fight back by using the chickens they were roasting to fool Donald into thinking he burned them to death. <laughs> well, Donald kind of deserved that dark prank after messing with fire around kids, especially. And the prank goes even further when one of them dresses like an angel being held by a rope. Donald finds out they were faking it. He ties them up and ships them off to school, but Donald gets embarrassed to find out the school is closed for the summer holidays. This is a hilarious short. 8 out of 10. Old McDonald Duck. <laughs> Old McDonald Duck had a farm, and on his farm he sings terribly. Donald tries milking a cow named Clementine, but finds the cow up a tree somehow. Donald gets bothered by a fly throughout. This is one of the most boring and uneventful Donald shorts I've ever seen. 2 out of 10. Donald's camera. Donald gets a camera and wants to take pictures of animals, but has rotten luck, as usual. It recycles animation from Little Hiawatha at one point. Donald bothers an angry woodpecker, and the woodpecker tries crushing both Donald and his camera. The short ends with Donald's camera getting crushed, as he ends up wanting to shoot the bird with a gun instead of a camera. It wasn't very good. 3 out of 10. Chef Donald. Donald tries following a recipe to make waffles. He accidentally grabs rubber cement, which makes everything worse. The short ends of Donald rushing over to the lady chef on the radio as we hear Donald attacking her. It's a pretty basic short. 4 out of 10. Don's Fountain of Youth. This will be the last short I'll review for part 1 of this Donald Duck review, and what a funny short to end part 1 on. Donald takes his nephews on a nature trip. The boys aren't interested. As Donald gets fed up with their spoiled behavior, he tricks them into thinking he fell into a fountain of youth and turned into a baby. Donald tricks them further by taking a crocodile's egg and fools them into thinking he de-aged into an egg. Donald laughs with the mother croc as the boys fall for it, only for the croc to realize the boys have her egg. <gasps> the boys run for their lives as the croc chases them. The eggs hatch and mistaken Donald for their mom. The ducks get away safely, and the mother croc approaches her babies, but they're scared of her. The mother starts quacking like a duck, and the babies accept her. It's a very funny short. 8 out of 10. Well, one down and hard to say how many more to go. This could be anything between um, a two to four parter maybe. But um, anyways, I hope you look forward to seeing more of these Donald Duck reviews. Thank you for watching. See you next time and have a great day.